Christian Pulisic, Captain America, the prince who was promised, possibly the greatest footballing prospect the United States has ever produced, looked cooked at Chelsea for the past couple years, struggling with playtime on a congested roster, far too often taking advantage of England's free healthcare, and when he was on the pitch, his form was spastic and effectual. The man looked in desperate need of a change of scenery. And when a discount move to AC Milan came on the table, Chelsea shipped him away. And just like that, Captain America was moving to Italy. I was scared of the anti-American sentiment in Europe, especially after how he was treated in England. So how is it going in Italy right now? Yes, one, Christian Pulisic has done the most for American-Italian relations since we liberated them from fascism in World War II. And in this video, we will break down how Pulisic has gotten off to a flying start at AC Milan and the path that this mercurial star took to get here. All right, let's do this one more time. Christian Pulisic was born in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Yes, that Hershey's. He is of Croatian descent. His grandfather was Croatian, and he could have played for the Croatian national team. And if we're going off the last two World Cups, he might have made the wrong choice choosing the United States, but we thank him for choosing the red, white, and blue. I know for a lot of my Europeans, it's hard to grasp that an American could be this good at soccer. So I think it would be easier to judge him if you think of him as a Croatian. Just a Croatian wonder kid with 88 potential in FIFA career mode. Because that's pretty much what he was. Considered a child prodigy, he moved to Germany before the age of 16 to join the storied football town factory that is Borussia Dortmund. The list of young stars that Dortmund have incubated and nurtured before letting them erupt onto the European stage is quite frankly disgusting. Names like Erlen Holland and Jude Bellingham would cut their teeth in the Bundesliga with Dortmund. And Pulisic took a similar path, even in a talent pool as loaded as Borussia Dortmund. Pulisic rapidly broke to the youth ranks, scoring 15 goals and assisting eight in only 15 games. And with that insane production, Pulisic was called up to the senior team by the age of 17. Now his first season would see him sparsely used, but the following season would see him break out and become an integral part of Dortmund's DFK Pokal winning campaign, essentially their FA Cup. In fact, he became Dortmund's youngest player ever to play for them in the Champions League and would go on to be the youngest player ever to score in the Champions League. In his first full season with the club, he amassed a hefty 13 assists in all competitions, all at the age of 18. He would continue this promising form for two more seasons before the Premier League came a-calling. His accolades at Dortmund made him a tasty prospect for Europe's elite. And the fact that he was American wouldn't exactly hurt with the price tag, as the American Christian Pulisic would become Borussia Dortmund's second most expensive transfer of all time. Nending the club a cool $73 million. Upon his move to Chelsea, Pulisic spoke about emulating his footballing idol, Eden Hazard. But the Belgian star recently departed for Real Madrid, a hefty player to live in the shadow of. So how did he respond? Well, in his first game that he scored at Chelsea, he actually scored a perfect hat trick. For my American viewers, that's one with the left, one with the right, one with the knock. Becoming only the second American ever to score a hat trick in the Premier League, and most impressively, the youngest Chelsea player ever to score a hat trick coming in 21 years and 38 days. Then the pandemic hit, but once play resumed, Pulisic would find the form of his life. The man looked like a regen prime Eden Hazard, minus the thick old booty. This sensational purple patch would come to be known as Pandemic Pulisic, aka Lockdown Pulisic, a form where he was pretty much untouchable till the end of the season, at least when he wasn't hurt. His speed, dribbling, playmaking, and finishing looked scarily familiar to the Belgian who had departed for Real Madrid and resulted in him in finishing the year with 11 goals and 10 assists. But more importantly, four of those goals and two of those assists came in the final eight matches of the season, which allowed Chelsea to crucially secure a spot in the Champions League for the following season. Remember that for later. Bullstick also holds a place in Premier League history, as it was his goal versus Manchester City late in the season that secured Liverpool their first league title since 1990. And many would consider it a little bit of cosmic payback, as it was Jurgen Klopp who gave Pulisic his first professional contract when he was 16 over at Borussia Dortmund. While the following season was a disappointment for Pulisic domestically, it would see him an integral part of a Chelsea team that would make yet another Cinderella run in the Champions League. Now remember, a Cinderella run that wouldn't even be possible if it wasn't for Christian Pulisic's heroics from the season prior. Now domestically, Chelsea were a mess the whole season. With them struggling mightily in the Prem, toiling in ninth place, they fired Frank Lampard mid-season and brought in Pulisic's old coach from his time at Borussia Dortmund, Thomas Tuchel. And to be honest, Tuchel 
didn't do that much better in the league. In fact, he failed at salvaging a top four finish in the league. But when it came to the Champions League that season, my man Tuchel worked wonders. He transformed Chelsea into a defensive sentinel, scraping by and giant killing on their way to yet another improbable tournament run. And Pulisic would be a key part of their Cinderella run. In fact, it was his goal in the first leg of the semifinals that salvaged a 1-1 draw versus Real Madrid. And then on the return leg, it would be his assist that would secure them a spot in the Champions League final, which they would go on to win 1-0 versus Manchester City, becoming the first American to not only play in a Champions League final, but the second to win it. Yes, there's an American who's won the Champions League final. He wasn't good enough to play. His name was Jovan Karofsky. Who? Yeah, I don't know who he is either. And if it wasn't for Captain America being on Chelsea, you can easily make the argument that they would have never won this trophy. Hell, if it wasn't even for Pandemic Pulisic, they wouldn't have even gotten the shot to be in this tournament, let alone win it. Say all this to say, Chelsea fans be grateful. As the young American basked in the glory of the Champions League trophy, little did he know that a dark turn was right around the corner. Now truly, the major issues for Pulisic's time at Chelsea started the season prior on a transfer ban that was placed on Chelsea for some shady transfers of children. I know, it sounds really sus, but it makes sense in the context of football. But anyway, that transfer ban got lifted and Roman Ivanovic just couldn't help himself. The man had oil money burning a hole in his pocket and he went on a shopping spree, grabbing a host of attacking players, all of whom were potential competition for Pulisic. High potential starlets like Kai Havertz, Timo Werner, and everyone's favorite hipster pick, Hakim Ziyech were brought into the squad. You combine that with the breakthrough of a young Mason Mount, and you had five players kind of vying for the wings, which would produce a frankly unhealthy competition for minutes. And looking back on it, you could argue that it stunted all of their promising careers. And I think it's pretty telling that three years removed from that transfer window, none of these players are still on Chelsea. And of these five, Christian is the only player thriving at his new club. Now, you can't talk about Christian Pulisic's career without talking about injuries. Yes, over his four and a half seasons at Chelsea, he would miss a staggering 55 matches. He has never been able to stay regularly fit at any point in his career. With a constant myriad of both serious and nagging injuries, it would be hard enough to find consistent playtime. But combine that with a congested roster of equally hyper-talented players at his position, and then sprinkle on top of that, that Pulisic would go through six managerial changes and even an abrupt ownership change during his four and a half seasons at the club. And you can see why this wasn't exactly a healthy environment for a young footballer to blossom. Nothing was consistent for this man since the day that he signed for the Blues. It wasn't all his fault. This wasn't just a Pulisic issue. Chelsea, who has always been a chaotic team, were just 100% mess in 2022. Nothing worked. They were a complete joke of a club, which resulted in four different managers in one season alone. And then you combine the fact that over the course of that season, new ownership splashed over a billion dollars to bring in new players to an already congested roster without moving on much of the old roster, which resulted in dressing rooms being so full that $100 million players had to change in the hallways and sit on the floor during team meetings. Even more names were brought in to compete with Pulisic for playing time the likes of Raheem Sterling, Mikhail Mudrich, and Jao Felix were just a few of the new names that Pulisic had to compete with. And really, none of them got consistent minutes. With a lot of these managers fighting for their lives, they would throw out different lineups practically every game, just praying that one of these combinations could get results for them, and then turn around and do a shock Pikachu face when the squad had little to no consistency in their form. This dynamic created a barrel full of crabs, where every player was constantly looking over their shoulder and never feeling settled because even if they performed well, it was no guarantee that the manager might not yank them out of the starting lineup, or if even the manager would be there next week. So it has become a very difficult thing to judge what Christian Pulisic really is, especially over his final two years at Chelsea. If he had just stayed healthy and got regular minutes, then the play would speak for itself. We could definitively label him a stud or a dud. But because of this cornucopia of bullshit and his pension for injuries, Pulisic has now become an enigmatic player to pin down. You could argue that he is a Rorschach test for how you want to see him. If you always thought that he was an overhyped American piece of crap, then you could say that his play is shit and that's why he's not getting play time. On the flip side, if you've been a Pulisic truther this whole time, you could point to the poor management and the congested roster that's been holding him back and cite that pandemic Pulisic is the true player that Pulisic is. But honestly, the only definitive thing you could say about Pulisic up until this point in his career is that he's injury prone. Now up until this point, we've only talked about his club history where the jury is still out. 
But on the international level, when healthy, he's pretty much always performed for the U.S. men's national team. In fact, up to this point, you can make an argument that he's been a far better player and a far more consistent player for a country than he has for a club. Unsurprisingly, he was the youngest player ever to play for the U.S. men's national team at a World Cup qualifier. He was the youngest American ever to score for the U.S. men's national team. And he was the youngest player ever to captain the U.S. men's national team. He's helped the U.S. men's team win the CONCACAF Nations League twice. Once in 2020, where he scored the winning goal, converting a penalty versus arch rivals Mexico in the final, and then produced one of the coldest photos in U.S. men's national team history. Glorious. And then they won it again in 2023, in a tournament where he won the Best Player Award. And Sam Jr. between those two trophy wins was a strong showing, as only World Cup appearance in Qatar. Suffice it to say, win fit, Pulisic has produced for the red, white, and blue. I mean, they call him Captain America for a reason. And luckily, as injury prone as he is, none of them have kept him away from a major tournament as of yet. I mean, hold on. Got a knock on wood. We got 2026 coming up. But unfortunately, beyond pandemic politics, he's never been able to replicate this form for Chelsea. Following his fine showing at the World Cup, many thought that maybe he could parlay this into a return to form for the Blues. Only for him to pick up a knee injury that sidelined him for two months. It is, in fact, the pull six cycle. Brief flashes of greatness, followed by an injury, and a drop off in form. Over his final season at Chelsea, he was sparsely started, often only appearing in 10 to 30 minute cameos, which resulted in his worst statistical year of his career, scoring one goal and providing one assist. It was a dreadful year as a whole for Chelsea, but especially disheartening for Pulisic, who admitted to struggling with depression due to the lack of playing time. And at the age of 25, he was no longer the wonder kid bursting onto the scene. He was supposed to be in his athletic prime, and yet, here he was, toiling away on a bench in dreary, cold West London. It was time for a new chapter. And when the summer window opened up, AC Milan swooped him up for a mere $22 million, a third of what Chelsea had bought him for. It was a humbling fall from grace. And now bearing the label of the American flop, Pulisic went to find his footing in a new country with a new team, culture, and language. And in a country that isn't exactly famous for loving Americans. So how's it been going so far? Booty! Sink! Sink! Yes, we did! Yes, we did! Yes, we all! Yes! Yeah, surprisingly, he has become an instant hit in Italia. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Italia. In his first match ever in the Serie A, Christian Pulisic would be the catalyst on the first goal, pretty much getting the pre-assist as Giroud opened the scoring early. And then shortly later, he played a sexy little one-two with the good-looking Frenchman before delivering a trace around from outside of the box. Hell of a way to welcome yourself to the Rosaneri. Then, in his next match, he opened up the scoring. Picking up an excellent position in the box, he found a cutback from his ex-Chelsea teammate Ruben Loftus, clapped them cheeks, and converted what was essentially a tap-in. But you wouldn't have known it if you listened to the official AC Milan announcer. Ball is in, come on baby! Come on baby! Come on baby! USA! 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 In this fine run of form would continue. Three matches later, he would go on to score the winner versus historically racist club Lazio. Yeah, look it up. You have a weird affiliation with Nazis. Check out this video for that. But moving on, in the next match, he would go on and score yet another winner in a 1-0 squeaker against Genoa. And this match was wild because it saw two red cards, including the star keeper for AC Milan, getting sent off with a red card in the final minutes of the match. In the post-match interview, Pulisic said, that he actually offered to go in a net. But the team shooed away his 5'8 ass and opted for Olivier Giroud because he was taller and more handsome. Okay, they didn't say the handsome part, but some things don't need to be said. Regardless, this blinding start made Pulisic an instant favorite to the Milan faithful. Because up until this point, Christian Pulisic had been the greatest American import to Italy since the tomato. Yeah, tomatoes aren't actually native to Italy. They just taste a hell of a lot better over there. I don't know why. Christian Pulisic would go on to win AC Milan's Player of the Month as he had scored four goals and assisted one in only five matches. But more importantly than that, he had Italian announcers shouting this. And I'm not entirely sure that this announcer, shouting every English word he knows in old Barack Obama slogan, doesn't make Christian Pulisic 10% a better player. Prove me wrong. He'd leveled up. Frankly, the way he played for AC Milan 
is how he looked when he plays for the U.S. men's national team. All the attributes that Americans laud out of, but never really surfaces in club play, except for maybe Pandemic Pulsic. The tireless running, the playmaking, the vision, the crossing ability, his positional awareness, and finishing were all on display. Now this blinding start wasn't exactly hurt, with having a couple familiar faces around. Olivier Drood, Loftus Cheek, as well as defender Fakayo Tomori were all ex-Chelsea teammates of his. And his first two goals were assisted by who? Yeah, you guessed it. Olivier Giroud and Loftus Cheek. But the familiarity doesn't end there, as his U.S. teammate, Yunus Musa, was also brought to AC Milan this past window. Now, he was originally seen as a depth piece, but Yunus was forced into the starting lineup due to injuries. And the results have been mixed. But beyond the familiar faces, I think for the main reason for Pulisic's level up is that he's just playing for a better team. While Chelsea have signed more young talent than any other team on the planet, AC Milan actually plays like they have talent. I need to remind my Americans, this is a team just one year removed from winning the Serie A. They had a deep run into the Champions League last year and boasts a well-balanced roster. Their best player is the young superstar on the left wing. Rafael Liao is probably the best young left winger in the world, not named Mbappe. His speed, skill, and finishing have electrified both AC Milan and Portuguese fans alike. But they also boast maybe the best left back in the world, undoubtedly the best attacking left back in the world at the moment in Teo Hernandez. This man has lightning pace, and you combine him and Rafael Leal running at defenders, and you get maybe the most devastating, maybe the most dangerous left attacking flank in European football right now. And that is where Pulisic has become so valuable to AC Milan this season. Because the issue last year with AC Milan is that teams would just focus completely on the left side. But now teams can no longer do that because with Pulisic's ability to run in behind, drive at defenders, and finish cross body, teams have had to spread themselves out. And with a cross to keep fullbacks honest, and one of the best target men in the world, and Olivier Giroud up top, Pulisic has provided AC Milan what they desperately needed last year, a consistent goal threat on the right wing. And with most of the focus being on Giroud and Liao, it has allowed Pulisic to free roam a little bit, often floating inside, picking up excellent positions, which has resulted in him poaching a couple of crucial goals. Simply, the team and its play style suit him much better than whatever the fuck Chelsea was doing for the last two years. And also it doesn't hurt that he has a coach that recruited him and believes in him. Everything was coming up Millhouse for the kid from Chocolate Town, Pennsylvania. And he carried this fine form into the international friendlies, grabbing a goal against Ghana before scoring this absolute beaut of a long ranger versus Germany a solo goal where he basically took on three defenders before arcing at top ends from 28 yards out. The man was looking absolutely unstoppable. The prince who was promised had finally arrived. Until, much like the rest of his career, right when he looks like he's reaching his final form, the injury fairy comes to pay a visit. First, he was pulled at halftime in the Champions League after providing a I might add, but we were told after the match that he had a minor oblique injury, but nothing serious. In fact, he started the next match in the Serie A only for him to go down again, this time with a hamstring injury. And again, they said that it was nothing major, but there's just so much evidence here. Every time this man gets an extended run of play, he gets hurt. Pulisic is like when Super Mario gets the star power. For a short period of time, the man looks unstoppable, but once that shit wears off, he dies. And injuries have been a major factor with AC Milan this year. They've been missing a lot of their starting lineup for most of the season, which has resulted in a recent poor run of games in the league. And this in turn, has put the coach on a bit of a hot seat. So as promising as a start as Pulisic has had at Milan, it's not inconceivable that a month from now, he could find himself again, languishing on the bench, trying to get fit with a new coach and having to prove himself all over again. I desperately hope this doesn't happen. And I do believe even if a new manager were to come in, Pulisic's shown enough to earn himself minutes when he's fit because there is a hell of a player there when healthy. And at 22 million in today's market, AC Milan have already gotten themselves a steal early on. So here's to me hoping that he can get his fitness back up, maybe take a page from the NBA, do some load management with the kid. And for my US men's national team fans, we now have a new European team to root for this season. And unlike Leeds last year, AC Milan are actually good. And even if they aren't, you should watch AC Milan just for the fact that when Christian Pulisic scores a goal, you get to hear this. Ball is there, come on baby! Come on, baby! Come on, baby! USA! 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 Hagen! PDD Hagen! Christian Pulisic, the captain of USA national team! And that's gonna be my level up video for Christian Pulisic. Thanks to Lewis for helping me edit. Thank you to all the homies on Patreon, keeping me alive and well. And yeah, until next time, boys, stay thick.